Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Mary Payton with All About STEM Radio. I come to you every Wednesday from 6 to 7 o'clock uh, in the Blue Bowl. Today, I know you probably see a red logo behind me. Uh, the Blue Bowl has a, is rebooting, so but we're still in the Blue Bowl. I haven't changed, so don't look for me somewhere else next week. Um, as I said, this is January. This is a new year. Hopefully, 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 your um, your young ladies and gentlemen that are in school are doing wonderful things. Those that are in college, some of y'all are getting ready to graduate, so uh, start looking for those jobs or looking into getting advanced degrees, whichever your heart desire. Uh, and also, I mentioned last week. Uh, we here at Fishbowl are doing Valentine's for Truth, so if you'd like to um, provide me with some Valentine's Day cards to turn in to Fishbowl so we can support our troops, please let me know and I will get them from you. Uh, this week, I have a young man who has been on my show before. Yes, sir. Yes, I have. Huh? <laughs> His name is Brandon Williams. And uh, he owns, uh, he runs an organization. He's director, owner, founder, uh, however you want to put it, <laughs> of an organization called Seeds to STEM. Now, what I love about his organization, now everybody does STEM, they do STEAM, they do robotics, they do engineering. He not only takes that side of the coin, but he is really into the science and the chemistry, or the biology and the chemistry yes. side of the coin. Uh, I have noticed him having his kids dissect frogs, making cosmetic, well, making lip balm, making, mm -hmm. you, you, we were talking out in the, uh, on the couch and you were talking about them making um, bath bombs. Yes. You're doing, oh, see my niece has got a kit this summer. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. So, uh, to refresh my audience on who you are, tell them a little bit about yourself. Well, again, thank you, uh, Doc, for having me on your show. My name is Brandon Williams, and I'm the founder and executive director at Seeds to STEM, where we provide manipulative-based learning, hands-on activities that are supplemental to what kids are learning in the classroom. Okay. Now, when um, I first met you, you were just getting started. Mm -hmm. So right now you are really out there. You're working with schools and other programs. Uh, tell me a little bit about what it is you're doing now. So our main focus is about school time. So we work in rec centers, churches, housing developments, and our biggest thing is inserting into program, in, excuse me, existing programs, providing supplemental services. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, this past summer we worked with Big Thought uh, in their com uh, camps in West Dallas and in Oak Cliff and in Pleasant Grove. Really? Yes. Okay, so what did you do with them? So we did, so again, we provide supplemental services. So we, came, we made, we made uh, bath bombs with mm -hmm. students. We also dissected frogs with your kindergartners. And, uh, I saw um, those pictures, those mm -hmm. were great. They were really, the kids had a ball doing that. And we made lotion. Oh, they definitely got into that. It, it was amazing to see uh, young boys really dive into using the mica, the pigment that uh, makes uh, products uh, shine and sparkle. Really get into that and have fun with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, what are you doing now? What kind of programs are you doing now? So, right now, we're, we're, um, we're getting ready for our Saturday program in conjunction with Big Thought at the uh, Trinity River Audubon Center. It's going to be over the course of three Saturdays starting on uh, the 26th of January. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, then, and at that particular uh, program, it's called Pleasant Grove Soars, at that particular site, um, we're making ho uh, insect hotels. Oh! Because play on the um, nature and conservancy of the uh, Trinity River Audubon Center, uh -huh. we wanted to do something unique and creative that the kids can leave behind. So when they go to the center, you know they can point at the thing that they created. Okay. Because see, next week I've got a young lady from the uh, Fort Worth um, Natural uh, Nature Center Refuge, the place that you went to doing. I love hiking up there. It's amazing. I haven't been up there yet. I gotta go. You definitely do. I have go during the summer. Uh -huh. uh, because they have wild bison, 
It's really, it's really neat. Yeah, you made that video, and I'm like, where is he with a buffalo? <laughs> <laughs> so tell me a little bit about how you got started with this. So I got started with Seeds to STEM in 2012. My background is lab animal medicine. I was working in a preclinical uh, research facility at uh, Charles Rivers Laboratories. Mm -hmm. um, and then I bounced around the country from Charles Rivers to Wake Forest University Non-Human Primate Center. Mm -hmm. I was working at uh, St. Jude. And then I landed here in Dallas. Mm -hmm. During my time at uh, Alcon here in Dallas, or DFW, uh, it was great. Then I found myself in between successes, as I would like to call it. I was laid yeah. off. But during my time of traveling around the country, I realized that I was the only person of color in the, in these research facilities. Yeah. And then if there was someone of color, they were always the janitor. And that, that really bothered me. So I was like, what can I do to uh, raise awareness and provide opportunity to be exposed to this space? Mm -hmm. And then that's when I came up with Seeds to STEM. Mm -hmm. and I was like, I just want to simply raise awareness and provide opportunity for students to get exposed. Mm -hmm. Now, when you first started, um, tell me a little bit about your evolution. What were some of the things that you started with working with kids, uh, with or trying to get kids and families involved? So our first, our first major push, we were blessed to start our first major program at Concord Church in Dallas. Okay. And over the course of six weeks, we provided. Oh, it was it was amazing. <laughs> It, they had 250 kids at their summer camp, and during the course of six weeks, we did a different STEM activity Monday through Thursday, every day, every single day, for K through eight. Now, that was the, an insane and ambitious goal, but we did it, uh, and I, I would never advise anybody to do that. <laughs> but like 250 kids, a different STEM activity every single day. So you have to scaffold oh, it. Yeah. You have to scaffold it up and down to fit their needs. Because the same yeah. thing we do for eighth graders, we can't do for kindergartners. Right, right. So that was the biggest challenge. But I had a great team of people, and out the gate, I was able to hire nine people. It was the first time I ever employed anybody, mm -hmm. and um, that was definitely an experience mm -hmm. in itself. But that's what really got us. That's what got me started. Mm -hmm. And then we evolved going into the following summer. Um, just going into, we were, we were blessed again to go into uh, Beckley St. Rex Center to do programming. And the manager there at the time brought us in. And that's when we started. We were making electric circuits using flower and uh, geo, not geodes, uh, LED lights and all that stuff. Wait, wait, electric circuits? Using flower. Okay, tell me how you do that. So it's just like two different uh, batches. One, uh, we put salt in one batch and sugar in the other because uh -huh. salt conducts electricity. Right, right. So mm -hmm. we, we make these small little, I would say, the size of a pen mm -hmm. or, or a Twix or a Kit Kat bar. Mm -hmm. And you make little uh, rods like that. And then if you separate them and you put the two ends of the uh, LED lights on both sides, mm -hmm. and when you touch them, it, co it closes the circuit. When you open it, it uh, opens the circuit and it lights up. It's very interesting. It's the simplest way to teach electric, uh, electric circuits to children. Oh, wow. You had to share that one with me. I like that one. Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, I, I look at some of the things you do. I look at some of the things you post. Um, how do you come up with some of these great... Well, wait a minute. Let me go back because I just got you totally off of <laughs> some of the things you do. <laughs> You know, no I, worries. I had a squirrel moment. Squirrel <laughs> it went all off by itself. But um, uh, let's move on with some of the things that you do in some of the places that you've worked. You said um, uh, my brain has just froze. You turned six, your brain stopped. So, again, our main focus is out of school time, informal okay. spaces. Um, we've worked to date, we've worked with Dallas Park and Rec in some of their rec centers. Uh, which is which are great places. To, they have some of the best rec centers. Whether it's mm -hmm. Beckley, definitely Beckley Center, mm -hmm. right off of uh, 35, it, is a great place to work. Um, we've worked again Concord Church. We've worked with Truly Missionary Baptist Church in South Dallas, mm -hmm. uh, South Dallas Cultural Center. Uh, again, one of our signature partners, Big Thought. Um, we've worked at the um, the Maddie Nash Rec Center in West Dallas. Mm -hmm. uh, Voice of Hope Ministry, Trinity River Mission, um, and the list just goes on and on. Uh, Butler Place in Fort Worth, 
we had a great summer that year yeah, sharing so the power stem Butler, in, in Butler. That area, Butler. Yeah. I hope I, I, that's one of the areas I hope that we don't lose. Yeah. Because I grew up in Riverside, which is just down the hill from where uh, Butler housing is. Mm. But uh, yeah, that that is an area that is like a landmark in Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. It is. So, the, so in our partnership with Big Thought, it allows us to extend that range. Um, by, we were at the West Dallas Multipurpose Center this past summer. We were at again. We were at the Redbird Swords, which was in which is in Redbird Mall, where we're office at now, in the uh, Redbird Entrepreneur Center. Okay. Uh, and at Pleasant Grove Swords, which is now is this going to be at the Trinity River Audubon Center? Mm -hmm. So we're really branching out. Um, you really are to be to diversify our locations because where the lack is the true lack is in communities of color right but yeah. it's in those places where um, the bus line may or may not go yeah so it, having great partners uh, allows us to extend our reach and, and you know what that is I love how you're doing this you talk about having partners because so many people try to do this alone Right. And it's a struggle. It is definitely a, a struggle. struggle. It's a struggle. You have got to work with, with people because people need your talent. They can't do what you do. Right. I mean, they can do it, but can they do it as well as you do? I don't think they can do it as well as we do it. <laughs> <laughs> they can try, you know. Okay, that's, that's my bit of area. <laughs> but that's because I've, I've followed you for so long and I've watched what you do and I've you know, you even when I was out of the country, we, you know, I'd message and say, okay, I see what you're doing, I like this, and you'd always message me back. And you know, there are quite a few people I keep up with, but you, it's just you do it differently. Thank you. you Thank you it. for following our progress. I really appreciate it. Oh hey, okay. I, I, I've watched you grow. You know, you're like one of my kids. I'm like, look at my baby. Please <laughs> stop that before your mom come and say, oh wait a minute, he mine. <laughs> but um. How do you come up with some of your ideas, uh, some of the things that you do? Because the, you don't do the normal thing. Um, so I, when I was in between successes, one of the things I, I did was taught. I taught eighth grade biology, chemistry, physics, yeah. sixth grade science. And I've taken some of the lessons that they teach in school, mm -hmm. then I modify them and adapt them to what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Or I, I turn them up and I, I found great activities on YouTube. Or sometimes it's just trial and error. I yeah. think about products that we use as African Americans, and say, for instance, the, ri the the rise of Shea Moisture products. Oh yeah. And how people fail to realize how easy it is to make their products. Because I make my own. You can you can look literally Google the products on the back of the bottle and realize it's basic stuff that you can get at Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. And how easy, because people fail to realize you can buy emulsifying wax out of some grocery stores and and health food on thirty five. You can buy this stuff. Mm -hmm. So I did, sometimes I just see a product or an item and I deconstruct it and then put it back together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's how I come up with most of the stuff. It's like trial and error. Well, I see something cool or, and I adapt it to what we're going to do with it. What has been the most enjoyable uh, trial and error, error that you've come up with that you've taken to the school? Yeah. Ah, the, the most enjoyable thing that we've done, how germ spread. Oh, okay. Tell me about uh, that. The basic way to do it is, um, you get uh, you get glitter. I get a big tray and I dump glitter all in the tray. You know I'm and, feeling this. I right. Go ahead on. You dump glitter in the tray, and you get you put some lotion, some uh, non-hypoallergenic lotion, like some baby lotion or something, mm -hmm. on like six or seven kids hands uh -huh. and you have them and but you have different colors of uh, yeah. glitter and then you have them stick their hand in the glitter mm -hmm. and then you have them go around and high five everybody then you can have them go and you, you have them you just get the principal's permission first <laughs> and then you run you have them run through the school touching stuff uh -huh. so what it does is it prompts the kid it lets the one incorporates uh, healthy hygiene yeah. to teach kids like it's important to wash your hands before you go to the well, after you use, leave the restroom mm -hmm. because when you don't you will spread germs just how just like we spread glitter yeah. and over the course of the uh, school year kids will still see the glitter and it'll prompt the thought like this what is what happens when I don't wash my hands spreading germs or and 
doing this during cold and flu season really drives the point home because half the kids in the school are sick anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so getting the teachers sick, mm-hmm. or the teacher come in sick, the kids don't came home sick. Oh, wow. So that's that's the most that's one of the most it's simple uh-huh. but one of the most exciting things. Now I didn't create that, but I I modified it yeah. to do something a little bit extra. I can't tell you what it is already. No, 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 no. <laughs> but I'll share the share the secret with you. Take to that activity and some of the principles. And you can do this activity with adults uh-huh. by getting getting sharpie. If yeah. it's a cost effective way, you can get sharpie, mm-hmm. put it on hands on your hands, and then like touch stuff. Or well, there's this. Um, this iridescent fluid that you can get, uh-huh. and you spray it on stuff, and then have them walk around, spray it on their hands, have them touch stuff, then walk around with black lights. Because mm. see, I did one uh, with my K4, uh, which was the vinegar and the uh, cabbage mm. indicator. The, you know, they all got a little cup of water, and the, I had a little vinegar in my cup of water, and we exchanged and by the time it was all said and done, we looked at how many people caught my cold. Huh. They didn't know. I, they didn't know I was the one with the cold, but I told them later. But you know, uh, who's who's gonna mm. catch my cold? So if your cup turned uh, bright pink, you had my cold. If it stayed purple, you didn't get sick. And the kids were just amazed at how many people can get sick if you don't. You That's know. a good one. Those are two great activities to merge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna share. We, we have to. Share. We got to. We we ha- we have to put ourselves in position to grow together. Oh yeah. Oh, and and that's what I've seen you do because, I, I, and I like how you're doing this. You you're um you're, you know, connecting with people. You're going out. You're not just you know, I'm only gonna work in this platform or that platform. But mm-hmm. I like the fact that you are putting the the science into it and the kids are understanding and it's not you don't go in and just do a cute little activity and then you're gone it's something that builds all year like you said they still finding glitter in the hallway someplace I was at an up of school when I did that, that the last time I did that activity and the principal the assistant principal emailed me like I'm still finding (laughs) glitter outside and in the building it's very interesting. I love doing that activity. But, you know, so um, uh, I'm looking at the time. I have to make sure I kind of stay on time. If somebody wants to contact you, uh, what's your social media? What's your uh, Facebook? What's your? Do you have a website? You know. Yes, we have uh, Facebook. Don't get no personal information. All right. <laughs> tell people. Don't give, don't give us your phone number. <laughs> no, no. Um, <laughs> So you can you can people can reach us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Seeds to Stem, um, and our website uh, www.seeds2stem.org, not dot com, uh, and that's again www.seeds s e e d s t o s t e m dot org. Okay, all right. Uh, since we're in a different bowl, is that the number for this bowl that they can call in on? If anyone is listening and they want to call and ask uh, Brandon any questions, the number here is 214. I have to make sure I don't give you all my phone number. 717-4678. That's 214-717-4678. If you have any questions, you want to get in touch with them while we're here on the show today. And I'd love for, for people to call in. But, uh, Brandon, um, yes, ma'am. um, So we're we're actually um, myself and my board of directors we're actually working on our strategic plan um, right oh. now. Um, we have an aggressive uh, five-year plan. I love that. Um, to within the next year, mm-hmm. our goal is to be in our own physical space mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, somewhere in the Oak Cliff area. I can't say where yet, but the yep, location we've already found a location. Um, so within a we're, we're going to move into our own physical space, uh, pr- preferably within the next year, mm-hmm. uh, and then 
within the next five years, I have an aggressive goal to serve at least 10,000 students. Ooh. Um, and it's doable. I think it is. Within, 20, within 2018 alone, just w between the end of June, I mean, mm -hmm. the end of June to the close of the year, we serve, we directly impacted 400 kids. So we can, we definitely can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and while still doing program, have a space, doing our own program, mm -hmm. uh, we're still going to out, uh, be out in the community at the, mm -hmm. some of the places that I mentioned mm -hmm. doing programming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, during the year, let me know where you are. And uh, I have to come out and do some little remote shows and some interviews with... Uh, we would love to have you. Yeah. You know, we and, would definitely uh, love and, to have and you. And post them. Um, on my YouTube channel, so yes. people can see what you're doing. We have we have to document it, document, document everything. It. Document. If you if you don't document it, it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> it only happened in your mind. mind. Yes, you have to have evidence. Yes, but uh, I mean you're doing you're doing wonderful things. Now I want to go back to some of uh, some of the activities that you do. Um, when they did the dissection, mm -hmm. the frog dissection, because I mean I thought that was so cute. How did the how did the girls react? I know the boys because boys like doing stuff like that. Well, how did the girls react? It was interesting. The the the, the young ladies acted more favorable favorable to the activity than the boys did. Really? Some of the young men were a little more squeamish, and and we were talking in the lobby about the the depth of questioning that yeah. our kids today are they're asking mm -hmm. because when we do dissection activities, uh, we call that we call it an activity called our bodies. So okay. when we go through the dissection, we, we relate the organs and how they function to the human body. Right. Because they can, and I have them pull it out, and, and we go through step, step by step what each organ does in the frog and how it relates, like the lung, the liver, you know, and uh, the bladder and all this, the intestines, mm -hmm. and how it relates to us. Uh, because some kids don't, they know they have organs, but they don't really know what their organs look like. Mm -hmm. So. Ooh, guess I want to call it in. Hello, oh, sorry for cutting you off. No worries. Hello, caller. This is Dr. Mary Payton with All About STEM Radio, and I have Brandon Williams here from C to STEM. Yes, how are you? Good morning, Brandon. This is Julie McDonald, and I was calling for Brandon. Hello, Julie. Okay. How are you? I'm well, Julie. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm just calling to say thank you so much for what you have done for um, our chapter association. Um, Brandon came in and did a training for us in, back in November at a child care conference. It has been a hit. Ladies are still talking about it. And I'm just sorry. I haven't posted our picture yet. Our camera guy got sick. And so he's oh, no worries. up and help. So I got the pictures. And I will be posting them really soon. So I just had to call in and say thank you so much for blessing us in science in a whole new way. I just want to say thank you. And we appreciate you. And um, yeah, that's all I want to say. Oh, thank you for love your class. Uh, thank you for that, and thank you for being a, a community champion for us. We we understand the value of pre-K education or early childhood education, and what you all are doing in the space is definitely helping us as well grow and share the power of STEM education. Oh, thank you so much, and um, that's what I want to say. When I see you, I'm like, look, I got a problem. So thank you. You guys have a wonderful day. We really appreciate what you have, we, what you are doing showing science in a whole different way. It, it was so fun, so I just can't thank you enough. You guys have a blessing. Thank you for calling. I have All right. See, Brandon, you, you, you doing it. <laughs> you are doing it. I'm trying to. My grandmother, my grandmother uh, shared something with me that I, I will never forget. What's that? She said, you can't dream about something you've never seen before. Hmm. So how can we expect our kids to be the next engineer or the next, you know, Dr. Payton or the next um, whoever, if they're not exposed to exactly. the discipline, how can we, how can we truly uh, expose, how can we truly expose them and, and get them to see themselves if they don't see them, see people looking that look like them doing the work. Yeah. So cultural capital is definitely a part of uh, our pro, our pro, uh, program model because we want when well, you're African American, Hispanic, or whatever, we want kids to see people who look like them yeah. doing the work. Yeah. If they don't see a, a female botanist, how can they know that they can be a botanist or a biologist mm -hmm. or pharmacologist? Mm -hmm. Because we push 
med school, med schools, med school, maybe veterinary school or pharmacy school. But there are there are a plethora of other disciplines within the science space it that is. kids have no idea about. It is because uh, you know the thing is, uh, oh, I want my baby to be a doctor. Okay, <laughs> they can be a doctor, but yes. what type of doctor do you want them to be? Do you want them to be a medical doctor? Do you want them to be a zoologist, a biologist, an oceanographer, a you know a uh, what is it? I wrote a uh, paleontologist. Yeah. All of these people are out there, and they you know you don't see that many people of color. You don't. You don't see that many female. I mean, even in my years of maturing, um, there were people not like me a lot. Uh, this is Dr. Mary Payton with All About STEM Radio. Uh, hello, caller. Hello. How are you? Oh, fine. And yourself? I'm doing well, thank you. I was just calling in, and I'm curious. I was wanting to uh, get some information as to exactly what STEM is or what's involved. Okay, STEM stands for uh, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. And um, it gets kids involved in those fields. It could be robotics. It can be various fields of engineering, uh, wow. different forms of mathematics like physics, uh, data collection, um, that kind of thing. Science, which is your all of your biology, um, oceanography, things yeah. like that, chemistry, um, and those kind of things. Okay, are the kids, are they required to have a certain amount of math or have reached a certain level or you guys will? So, so what makes, what, what makes them unique is you don't have to have, there are no prerequisites. No prerequisites. There are no prerequisites. Most programs, especially our programs here at Seeds to STEM, we accept kids where they where they are because we're our activities aren't based off of a, some type of standardized test or any of that. We want kids to be able to explore, and our camps and classes don't feel like school. They feel like fun activities that supplement it with the information they need to help move them forward academically. Are the kids, uh, is there a certain age level that you guys accept? So we, 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 I tell people we focus on K-12 education. Whether you have a kindergarten or a 12th grader, we, we create programming and camps tailored towards the age range or, or grade levels. Okay, is that, is that also available in Houston or is it uh, just in Dallas right now? Right now we're currently uh, only in Dallas. But we we would love the opportunity to branch out and travel travel south to come provide programming in in where whatever space we can find down there to do the programming. We are mobile. Okay. Okay. And how, do you have a website I could probably visit to, to get more information or read more about it? Yes, sir. You can go to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and, and we're at Seeds to STEM. And you can go to our website at www.seedstostem.org. And if you need more information, just email us at info at seedstostem.org. Okay, thank you very much. No, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, um, now, you, you said you uh, work with K-12. Mm -hmm. um, here, and we talked about some of your K stuff, a little bit of your middle school stuff. What is some of the things that you do with the, the 9 through 12? Nine through twelve is 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 really technical. Okay. Um, it revolves around more critical thinking than anything, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because by the time kids get to ninth grade, some some students do it in ninth grade, some don't, some schools yeah. don't. Um, and in the nine through twelve space, you really have to do things that are innovative to hold students' attention. Oh yeah. Because if not, they honestly they just don't care. Mm -hmm. So, what we do is our we have these programs. We do a lot of Arduino okay. robots. That's what we're uh, going into. Uh, big, having kids being able to build their own cars, programming them, um, and doing stuff like that is really challenging them. Earlier we talked about making lotion. Um, we take that a step further. We want, you, we want you to do more than just learn the chemistry behind it. 
because everything is a business. Yeah. Science is a business. And having our kids understand that you making lotion or Himalayan sea salt foot scrubs, you can then turn that into a business for yourself. Mm. Because you have access to the product. You can go to you can go to Dollar Tree and get Himalayan sea salt. Go get some canola oil or some olive oil out the same aisle, mix it, bam, you have sea salt foot scrubs. Or and go to Michael's and get some essential oils, mm -hmm. bam, now you're selling your own foot scrubs to your family and friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you're so right. And that's one of the things that I wanted to uh, touch upon. Uh, the things that I've seen you do, you know, outside of the dissection mm -hmm. and stuff like that, are things that are great takeaways for kids. It's not something they do it, you know, they build a robot, they un they take it apart and they leave all the pieces mm -hmm. at the program where they were. Uh, what they can do, they can take it away with them and they can remake it, they can redo it, they yes. can reuse it. And that's what I like. So we offer what we call manipulative-based learning, hands-on activities mm -hmm. that are supplemental. And we don't, our, our programming, we don't do any paper-based programming. I love it. No paper-based. Uh, and the kids are able to take the pro take the things that they create with them, mm -hmm. uh, with the exception of dissecting frogs. Right, frogs <laughs> they can't right. take the frogs with them. So we do solar sun cars, and we talk about renewable energy, and I'm, we make sure that each child has their own solar car to build and take with them. Because what you see in some programs is, is that they do things in groups. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And at the end of the program, the, the facility or the organization left with all these toys or cars that they can't repurpose. Right. So we, we do a great job of sourcing reasonable products, reasonable mm -hmm. quality products, mm -hmm. and so kids can take it with them. Mm -hmm. And so they can keep on, so they can tear it down and put it back together at home. Mm -hmm. And, or re redo it into something else, mm -hmm. go from a car to a Jeep, or yes. a, 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 a car to making some type of windmill using the same motor. Yes. You know, it's a whole lot of things that they, it, it, it challenges their imagination yes. in you, a good way. Being able to think critically outside of the for our students, because most of the time, us put it like this, we want to take the activities that we're providing and attach to real world solutions. Mm -hmm. Everything we do is applicable. Mm -hmm. They can take it. They can take the lessons learned mm -hmm. and apply it to something that they're doing in their everyday lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's important because what's the purpose of just doing an activity so it can help boost test scores? Because some of the stuff we do, they can't use it in the real world. How, why would I teach um, solar cars to a child in South Dallas if it's not if it's not applicable to where they are? Exactly. You know. And teaching them that hey, you can take then take this solar car apart, modify it, and use the uh, solar cell to charge a cell phone. Oh, you know, I didn't doing, think about that. Doing things like that, so we have to we have to be truly innovative when it comes to how we deliver programming and the content that we're feeding our kids, uh, because we want them we want them to know that you know it's it's more to it than just the thing that's right in front of you. Like, what kind of extensions can we offer to the kids to push their knowledge mm -hmm. forward or past what, we, what we're presenting, and presenting mm -hmm. to them? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, you've got to look at it. They have, it's got to be applicable. Yes. And it has to be something that is, that relates to them, something they can relate to. Mm -hmm. Because, um, you know, yeah, you can make bad bombs, but taking that a, a step farther, Oh wait a minute! I can make a business out of this. Do y'all right. have any kind of um, um, well? I guess the organizations that you may uh, work with have any kind of uh, entrepreneurship training? Do they get that within the uh, umbrella of uh, some of the um, you know camps that y'all do? Um, I'm sure. I'm sure they they're they're there. Uh, mm -hmm. But during my time, I haven't come across them yet but when when we try to incorporate or infuse um, entrepreneurship and financial literacy into our programs mm -hmm. we go to um, impact house it's a great organization in right, Dallas right. that uh, teach entrepreneurship through STEM um, and then we also utilize projects still our rise they do a great job teaching entrepreneurship and financial literacy at, uh, as well so those are two of the organizations that we utilize mm -hmm. uh, to help move us forward in that space. I mean, I'm just listening to you how you have made the connection with other organizations mm -hmm. 
um, uh, in this endeavor. I mean, no wonder you have, have risen so much because with what you've done, you've been able to focus on just, I mean, well, you know, a little bit more, but focus on the STEM to STEM to STEM, to STEM. STEM <laughs> platform yes. uh, instead of branching out in the, the other things. You've allowed other organizations to, uh, to impact your organization to make it right. better. So what I what I had to learn early on um, is that it's important. Everybody has a set of gifts. Yes. It's important to stay in your lane. <laughs> <laughs> um, exactly. There are a lot of people try to do STEM, mm -hmm. and I don't do STEM or STEAM. I'm I'm a science guy. Science is my thing. I do chemistry. I do a lot of biology. You know, I may do some techie stuff, but. The, Tech and engineering is not my thing. Mm -hmm. Art is in my thing. I know that's why Big Thought is one of our partners because art is in our thing. Is in our thing. It's their thing. Mm -hmm. uh, tech and uh, tech and engineering. Um, I utilize hack electronics for that. I to, love that. Excuse me. Or illuminate STEM. We use. Mm -hmm. the, we connect with them to do those type of things because it's not. It's not my ministry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so and it's being able to collaborate. There are plenty. Uh, amazing African American Hispanic men and women that's doing this uh, doing the work yes. so bringing them giving them the platform uh, elevates my platform and it shows us how we it shows others how we're collaborating in the community because people assume that we're not and it's not about it's not a just it's not just about seeds to stem it's mm -hmm. about how we can uplift and elevate each other during the process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And I mean I, I love the connections um, that you made now, um, you talked about a little bit about the, the team that you have amassed mm -hmm. in this whole uh, situation. Would you like to, uh, you know, give some shout outs, talk about them a little bit? Uh, oh, some, of, some of the wonderful people that you have that uh, work with you, support you, and uh, go I'll, out and do great things. I'll start one one of my biggest champions. I'll start with my sister. Her name is Gloria Williams. Hey, Gloria. Um, I, I doubt she's on social media, but I did give her the link to listen in. Uh, my sister has been my biggest champion mm -hmm. uh, throughout the years. Uh, <laughs> funny story. Uh, we were invited to the TI uh, Bring Your Daughters and Sons to Work Day. Yep. And we were doing slime, and I underestimated the magnitude of the event. <laughs> so it was just her and I there doing slime. And within two hours, we served 275 kids to the point where T.I. had to send over their volunteers. And she was a trooper during that time. Wow. And she was on, she, my, my sister is a teacher at IL Texas in East Fort Worth. Yeah. And she was off on her break, and she stepped in to help me during that time. And she's, like, I'm, I'm forever grateful for her. For uh, helping me out during not just during the school year but during the summer as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and I, I have a host of other people. You know, um, Michelle Williams at the Red Bird Entrepreneur Center for um, having us, uh, allowing us the office there, mm -hmm. um, and uh, have some of my experiments that I'm removing tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I can boot your ferment there. <laughs> I got fussed about that earlier, <laughs> so I'm sorry, Michelle. I'm removing that tomorrow. Uh, and then uh, great support, uh, a good uh, Ashley Randolph, who's sitting out in the back. She's probably not listening, but uh, she's helped me out significantly over the past month. So we have a, a plethora of people that's definitely, you know, holding us down right now. Okay. Now, um, based on everything that you're doing, you know, you said you're looking at wanting to service 10,000 kids by what point? But within the next five years, within starting next, this year, 10,000 students, yes. Within the next five years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what are some of those goals? What are some of those milestones that you're wanting to make? So, one of, a goal, a milestone that we want to reach is to have, to have, increase our partners, Mm -hmm. um, within districts like all the great Southwest, your Lancaster, Cedar Hill, Duncanville, DeSoto, mm -hmm. um, building a stronger, a strong relationship with uh, DISD to ensure that we can meet those goals within our our uh, target area. Um, 
in other nonprofits and churches that's in the area that need supplemental services. We don't believe in recreating the wheel. There are people who already have the facilities and the space and the students. We just yeah. want to support them during the process. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, doing stuff like this, it, it opens the kids' eyes to different mm -hmm. things that are out there yes. as far as uh, what their careers could possibly be. Yes. You know, we, we, we know the big, the big things like being a nurse, being a doctor, being a teacher, being a lawyer, uh, being a psychologist, you know, but what are those actual other things that they can, that they can be? And a lot of our students don't understand that. Hmm. There's, that's interesting you say that. Um, during my time, during my time when I was in between successes, <laughs> I love how you. <laughs> I uh, I found myself working at Pizza Hut headquarters in Plano, mm -hmm. and I was a food scientist. And my job when I was at Pizza Hut was to it was in a food lab, and my job was to measure the viscosity of the Alfredo sauce. Okay. So my job was to measure tomatoes and onions on pizza before and after it came out of the oven. That's a thing. That's a job. That's a job. Someone's getting that paid, get paid for. That someone's getting paid a nice sum of money to do that at Pizza Hut right now. Pizza Hut, Little Caesars, Domino's, wherever they hit Frito Lay, people are getting paid for that. Speaking of Frito Lay, one of the one how I encourage kids to enter STEM is I talk about the the invention of the hot Cheeto. Oh Lord. The teacher's nightmare. Hot Cheeto. So most people fail to realize, um, so is this uh, Mexican-American gentleman out of California. They were mixing, they were mixing che uh, the Cheetos, and they forgot to dust a batch of chips mm -hmm. with the cheese dip, the cheese. Mm -hmm. So what were they going to do with it? So instead of, when they have uh, accidents like this, the employees take it home. Mm -hmm. So what the, gentleman, what the gentleman did was he took the chips home, and then add chili powder to them. That's all he did. He took he took chili powder mm -hmm. and added to the Cheetos. Came back and was passing them out at work. <laughs> now this man, every time a bag of Cheetos is sold, even if he gets a penny, a bill billions of bags of Cheetos are sold every year. Goodness gracious. Because so he's a millionaire right now just because of that. And it, it and with that being said, I tell I tell him about a job called the flavorist. There's a kid a flavorist. There are there are chemists that are called flavorists, and their sole job is to make sure the flavor on Cheetos and Takis are consistent. That's that's their job. I'm pretty sure it's a little more to it than that. Okay. But think about who comes up with the flavor of foods. Chemists. Yeah. Food scientists. Some of that happens right here in DFW. Really? So so in telling kids, not only offering kids programs, that's not enough. No. We have to make real world connections that they can see. Mm hmm So what we do is we, we tell them, okay, this is a this is an activity. This is a job within the activity that you can do. This is a job that at your, your Paul Quinns, your mm -hmm. UTAs, your mm -hmm. SMUs, your U, UNT Dallas. These are, these are degrees that you can go get from these institutions that will, lead, that will have you working at your Pizza Hut. Or the R&D department at Sally Beauty Supply, which is in Louisville, mm -hmm. that they do all their research and development at. Really? Or Mary Kay up in DFW, where they do all the research and development. These are things that people don't know. Because you assume that you have to leave DFW to do this. No, you don't. And you don't. There are, or people, when people get, students get engineering degrees, they think they just have to work for TI. No. But, there, but the reality is, for every major corporation like your TI and Dell, there's subsidiaries that's within walking distance of that. I said, there's engineers who create the, the watches at Fossil in, in like Richardson. But we don't think of these things. I, you know, I, I, you, 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 you're sitting here blowing my mind because I'm not even, I, I, I had not even taken, taken the thought that far of, you know, you know, the people who make watches, probably the people who make uh, different designs of shoes mm -hmm. or some type of, you know, because you got to have something to probably support your foot, 
proper material. Oh my goodness. Everything has to be engineered. It really and truly does. Everything is engineered by engineers. Clo clothing is engineered. I you don't it's, even it's think designed, that. but it's also engineered. Medicine is engineered. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the new capsules that you take that slowly release stuff over time. One end is one color, one end is another color. People think though that's just decorative and it's not. Everything within medicine has a purpose. And, and you're right. I thought it was just decorative. No, and people, but people don't think of these the, these little things. That is so interesting. I mean, is this is so much. And I mean, like you say, you stay in your lane. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying, your lane, even though you stay in your lane, your lane is vast. Your lane is still big. I agree. And we're, we're not, we haven't begun to, we haven't begun to like encroach into like the depths of science mm -hmm. or activities that we can do. I'm still learning myself. I believe in being a lifelong learner. And so as too. long as I'm learning, I'm going to expose our children to everything creative and cool that I can find. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't care what it is. I found this one activity called edible balloons that we do um, that we do with adults. Okay. Um, uh, by just creating edible balloons, putting helium in it, it's simple. I don't want to get a recipe out. <laughs> no, don't give it out. <laughs> a simple activity of cre creating edible balloons. You know, when we were little, we used to take balloons and then suck the helium out so we can have squeaky voices. Yeah. But why does it happen? Yeah. Teaching the science behind when you inhale helium or different gases, this this is what happens. These are the gases you don't inhale, yeah. but if you did inhale, you know this is what happens. Like we can inhale other gases outside of helium. Helium gives us this deep, uh, a high pitched voice, mm -hmm. but there are other gases for yeah. liability reasons. I'm not going to name no, on no, the radio. No, 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 no. Everybody knows about helium. They don't know right. about the other ones. They don't know about the I other know stuff. What about. <laughs> that will make your voice a little bit deeper. So mm -hmm. it's that very white sound. And there's so many other cool yeah. things that we could expose, not just students, but encourage adults to do as well. Yeah. Because if they're if I can only do so much, but when we go when he moves when kids leave me, we have to start equipping parents to do the same. Yes. Because what you see is your educated families or parents or mothers, fathers, they're more inclined to expose their children because they see the benefit. Mm -hmm. But when you have someone who, who didn't major in biology or physics or chemistry or engineering or what or English or whatever, when they when they're not in that space, you know, you, what you see is they're not comfortable with the material so they don't right. share it with their kid. And what when we do, when we do that, we're crippling our children. So what I always pose the question, what can we do to equip parents to equip their children? And, that, and that's so true. And, you know, and some of it is um, is taking your kids to see different things, right. doing different things with your kids. If your children have a question about something, uh, look it up with them. Find mm -hmm. the answer with them. Right. You know. One thing, I met a good friend of mine, uh, Alicia Morgan, over at the Frontiers Flight, uh, Flight Museum. She, uh, yeah, she, she uh, made a comment on uh, your post today. <laughs> yeah. Like she's uh, she's she does a great job of doing that, equipping yes. adults and educating them on on what to on how to equip their children. Mm -hmm. So it's like we have in the, I'll speak just in the African American community, we have uh, an amazing group of people that's out there like yourself, myself, and a host of other people that's mm -hmm. doing the work. But sometimes we don't know who each other who we are. Yeah, and, and that's and that's the problem. And that, you know? that's that's the whole premise of this show mm -hmm. is. Um, making connections or because I've had people say oh you remember you had this guest on uh, they did this this and this can you connect me with them mm -hmm. uh, or you know we're doing a seminar on sickle cell anemia do you have a do you know anybody who's written books or who's doing anything in sickle cell and I can make that connection with them um, I know this hour has gone by quickly oh it's been, it's been an hour already <laughs> yeah we got like 30 seconds left <laughs> But um. uh, it, it, re it requires little effort to share the power of STEM education with your family, friends, and coworkers. Um, regardless if you're comfortable with, with it or not, sharing 
the power of STEM education is uh, very important. So please do that by following us at seeds2stem.org and sharing our post on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Doc, for having me. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Dr. Mary Payton with all.